So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the 24 core GPU variant of the M1 Max. And specifically, this particular MacBook Pro is the cheapest M1 Max MacBook Pro that you can buy. It's $28.99. So basically the way I got to this was I went on the Apple configurator, picked out the base model, clicked on the 24 core GPU, which added 32 gigabytes of RAM, and that's it. So this is the cheapest M1 Max out there. The only one that you can get for sub $3,000. And that is what got me really interested. So today we're gonna figure out how this thing performs in synthetic, gaming, and real world benchmarks. And we're gonna see if, you know, sub $3,000 for an M1 Max is a good deal or if it's just not really worth it. So this is it, the least expensive version of the MacBook Pro with M1 Max, and it's still $2,900. So it does make you wonder, if you're already spending 3K just to get into the, the entry level, keep in mind, we, we don't even have a terabyte of storage. This is 512 gigabytes. So is that worth a trade-off? The M1 Max is undeniably extremely expensive. And to start this out, I'm not even gonna tell you guys about the CPU benchmarks that I ran on this thing because they were exactly the same as on every other 10 core M1 Pro or M1 Max. That's already pretty interesting because you're paying all this extra money and the only place you're gonna notice that is in GPU performance or tasks that can take advantage of the GPU as well. So speaking of those tasks, what about Final Cut Pro? That's that's the use case that, that I have for these things. So I ran the render and the export test, and that render took only three seconds shorter than the M1 Pro with 16 gigabytes of RAM, and it only took a few seconds longer than the fully loaded 16 inch, which costs $4,000 with the 32 core and 64 gigabytes of RAM. And then the same thing in the export, all of these machines were just a few seconds apart. Going through some other GPU benchmarks that I performed in Geekbench 5 Compute, we had a score of 51,620. That was interesting because it was about 10,000 points higher than the M1 Pro, but again, about 10,000 points lower than the M1 Max with the 32 core GPU. So scoring right in the middle there. And we saw pretty similar results in GFX Bench. In the Aztec high tier off screen test, we scored 242 FPS, which sits pretty much in the middle of the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. In Manhattan 1080p off screen, we scored 1136, which was actually a little bit closer to the M1 Max than to the M1 Pro. And a similar story happened in the T-Rex off screen benchmark where we scored 1989, which was in between the 1579 of the M1 Pro and 2244 on the M1 Max. In 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, we scored 14,660, which is again, pretty much right in the middle here between 10,333 and 18,750. And then finally in Basemark GPU, we got a score of 7,327, which is a little bit closer to the high end, 9,601 on the M1 Max compared to 4,883 on the M1 Pro. And I do think it's worth noting that my numbers for the M1 Max with the 32 core GPU and 64 gigabytes of RAM were all taken on a 16 inch MacBook Pro. So the fact that we're right in the middle there means first of all, that the GPU is scaling pretty well. And second, that we're not seeing a ton of impact from the smaller thermal envelope of the 14 inch. So if you missed my video where I compared the M1 Pro 14 and 16 inch with the same specifications, I would definitely recommend checking that out because I was very interested in the results that I saw. So let's get into some gaming loads here. I've pulled up the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark here and we're gonna do, yep, there we go, 1200p medium. Let's go ahead and run the benchmark. I'm really surprised actually right now. We look like we're scoring much closer to the M1 Max than to the M1 Pro. So for context on the 16 and 14 inch with the M1 Pro, we had 55 FPS on average. On the M1 Max, it was 97 with the 32 core GPU. This is running really well. Keep in mind, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is still a Rosetta application. It's been used a lot for benchmarking because it seems to run pretty well. 
but this is Rosetta. We're getting 72 FPS right here. I'm noticing a little bit of strange artifacting going on here. I'm not sure what is the cause of that, but that's a little weird. You can probably hear this a little bit. The fans are just starting to kick in. It's not very loud, but they are audible. Okay, we're about to get our score here. Wow, well, okay, average FPS of 77. So I guess that is about midway between the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. So the M1 Pro 55, we're sitting here at 77, the 32 core at 97. So next up is CSGO and already I've hit a bit of a roadblock. We are faced with a completely blank screen, but apparently there's a fix for this. So let's try that out. Launch options. Where is that? Oh, here it is. Okay, so there's, that apparently fixes it. Let's find out if it happens. Oh, wow. It actually worked. Look at that, we're in. Okay, so apparently it'll let us run at full 3024 by 1964. Let's see. Oh, wow, look at that. It even goes up into the notch. CSGO at full 3K running in Rosetta, and this is an OpenGL application, so it's a deprecated API. I don't have high expectations for this. What? Okay, this is actually running, <laughs> this is actually running really well. Okay, that's hilarious. Look up at the notch. Look what the teams are doing there. What? What is that? Is it just completely cut off or is it hiding around the notch? Oh my goodness. You know, I wish I could tell you guys what my FPS is right now, but the counter is hidden behind the corner, so I can't, I can't read it. Okay, so I changed the resolution to 3024 by 1890 so that it's no longer hidden by the notch. And now things are actually much more legible and I can tell you that we are running at an impressive 97 FPS. Holy moly, 97 FPS and we're running through Rosetta and in OpenGL. I mean, okay, CSGO is not a difficult game to run and this is a $3,000 computer, so I can understand why you might not be that impressed by this, but given the compatibility bottlenecks that we're running into here, I think this is pretty impressive. So next up, we have Cities Skylines. This is a pretty CPU intensive game. Um, it's also fairly GPU intensive, especially once you get to a large city. And I've loaded up a fairly large city here. This has a population of 147,000. And we're also at nighttime, which sometimes has a performance penalty. I have to say though, uh, performance is not terrible. So we're sitting at about 30, 20s, 30s FPS right now, running at 3K resolution on high settings. So honestly, that's not that bad. Once we zoom out here, it seems like we're pretty much locked at 30 or 40. So with the resolution set down a little bit, we're sitting at around 30 to 40 FPS. And honestly, this is a totally playable game. And I should also mention that I'm not having to yell over fan noise. That's a pretty big difference. Now the top above the keyboard here is a little toasty, I will say, but I don't think it's you know in any danger of overheating or thermal throttling, and that's pretty impressive. So next up we have Hitman, which is a really good looking game that has a pretty solid Mac port. Like even on older Macs, I've been able to get pretty good FPS in this game. Now I am <laughs> always interested in, in looking at the resolutions that these games launch in. 1152 by 720, very interesting. Let's see what we can set that to. You know what, I'm just gonna do 3024 by 1890. That'll uh, keep us right below the notch here. So we won't have to lose any UI up there. And you know what, while we're at it, I'm just gonna push this thing to max settings. So we're at 3K max ultra settings. Let's just see what happens. Wow, so we are getting 5350 FPS. That's pretty bonkers. I've completely maxed out the settings here and we are getting near 60 FPS. I think we could probably get this up to 60 by just turning down a few pretty simple things. All right, so we're now on high medium settings and wow, yep, it's locked, 60 FPS. That's pretty bonkers. And this game looks really good and it's running in Rosetta and it's on a laptop and the fans are barely even audible. Oh man, you see, you know, this is not a gaming laptop. Nobody is ever gonna say that this is gaming laptop. So the purpose of a video like this is, hey, if you are buying one of these new MacBooks and there are some fun games 
that are Mac compatible or even some that aren't. You know, we could definitely do a video where we explore this computer and the 32 core GPU with something like uh, Crossover or Parallels, which allows you to run even more games. So yeah, you're not gonna be buying this to play games on it, but if you can play games on it and you want to, that's a nice option to have. And right now we're sitting here, we're, we're in a really crowded area, lots of NPCs, and we've dropped down to about 48, 50 FPS, but still really, really playable. And we're on pretty much high settings. That's unbelievable. That's really impressive. Does it feel any warmer? So it seems like the fans are being kicked in um, preventatively, but they're not really that loud. I'm impressed. All right, so the final game that I've got lined up for you guys today is Civilization VI. This is a game that I do actually play pretty often on my M1 MacBook Pro. And when these new MacBooks were announced, I was like, oh, finally, that means when I'm like out and about and I just have my laptop and I wanna fire up a quick game of Civ, I'll be able to do that at higher frame rates. It runs pretty well on the M1, but let's see how it runs here. It seems to not be running super well. Like all the menu is bugged. All right, let's see if I can run the benchmark here. I was able to click on that even though pretty much the entire UI is bugged here. So clearly um, gaming on the M1 Pro and the M1 Max is a bit of a mixed bag. You know, obviously there's already some things about Apple Silicon that are a little bit iffy compatibility wise and gaming, I mean, that's two la layers of iffiness but at the very least, it looks like we're doing pretty decently in the benchmark here, looking at 40 FPS, but I don't know what uh, resolution or settings we're running at because this is just in the benchmark. And so now that we're done with our tests, let's talk battery life. When we started the video, I was up at about 80%. Now we're sitting at 49%. I've been recording for about an hour with pretty much maxing out the GPU during that time. So. Yeah, I mean, the 14 inch battery life, when you really push this thing, especially now with more GPU cores sucking up more power, you are gonna lose some of that battery life. But nonetheless, if you're going to be maxing it out this much, there's a pretty decent chance you're gonna be plugged in anyway. So that's just one of the costs of the 14 inch form factor. But the thing that I was most interested in with the 24 core GPU was how it would compare to the M1 Pro and then the M1 Max with the 32 core GPU. And it looks like we're falling smack dab in the middle, which is just what you would want to see. And um, honestly, I have to say, from my initial testing here, it looks like the 24 core GPU is a pretty decent option because if you're already going for 32 gigabytes of memory, then it's $200 to add those extra eight GPU cores as well as increased memory bandwidth and external display support. I think that's pretty decent for $200. I'm curious to know what you guys think, so let me know in the comments below. And I am planning on having a super mega 14 inch MacBook Pro comparison at some point with some really thorough tests between my base model with the 8 plus 14, my mid tier one with the 10 plus 16, and then this higher end one with 10 plus 24. So let me know if you'd be interested in seeing a mega comparison between all of those. And thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.